You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, good welcome back to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and uh, it's nice to be back with you. It's been a little while since we've been sitting in these chairs with various things going on, but uh, glad to be back. Thankful for you who are listening, and and, uh, particularly those that are taking a few minutes to send in a question, which you can do at askadroneyou.com. Remember, this show is for you, and that is the way that manifests is through your questions. So uh, we'd love to hear from you. As always, askadroneyou.com. Yeah, excited for today's question, Rob. Me too. Um, Yeah, I'm always excited for these questions. And as we know, most of them fall under the purview of Paul. I don't think that's any different today. (laughs) But that's okay. (laughs) Um, So are we going to jump right in? Yeah, let's hear it. Let's jump right in. Hey guys, Brendan here from New Jersey. As an architect, I use my Phantom 4 Pro to produce bird's eye renderings and general building surveys to get a better understanding of existing roof conditions, heights, utilities, and etc. Today, I was trying to determine the height of an existing building using the altitude information given within the app, which did not seem to be accurate. Instead, I ended up aligning the drone with the roof and shooting a laser measure up to the underside of the drone to get the height. Is there a more efficient way to obtain the height of a building or object within the application? I had seen that PIX4D allows this functionality, but I don't want to pay for that app at this point. Thank you for the amazing content you provide and the passion you bring to the community. Next to Joe Rogan's podcast, you're my favorite. Take care. (laughs) I missed that little last sentence. Any other question we've ever had, that's my favorite. No, that's awesome. If only uh, we just signed a hundred million dollar contract Spotify with deal. Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> Far cry <laughs> from that. But Man, I too, I Joe, too enjoy Joe's show. I really do. Joe is one of the few people who has the opportunity to fundamentally change things in the United States. Mm-hmm. Like, let's do a presidential debate through him. Like, his show on that was so good. Yeah. Like, how can we expect to have intelligent presidents if we don't have intelligent debates? Like, that was one of my favorite shows of all time, of all podcasts. Wait, I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, one of Joe Rogan's shows where he had Bernie Sanders on, and everyone thought it was about Bernie Sanders, but you get into later on in the show, mm. and they talk about everything that's wrong with the debate system and how the media purports uh, yeah. politics, and it was very well done. It was very well done. And I, yeah, I watched that or no, I actually watched that show as well. And no, maybe I listened to it, whatever. Anyways, it was very good. And, and the point to that was, since we're on it, that the debates do not give a person ample opportunity to actually share a meaningful yeah. voice answer. Right. And how and, are you going to change society if you can't take more than two or five minutes to explain how you're going to do it? Like these yeah. are complex problems that require complex solutions. I wish more people would take political theory class because they would learn how the United States has just perpetuated this, you know, fix it and run, fix it and run, fix it and run instead mm-hmm. of, you know, solving the core problem. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's no, a it's, great show. It's great. I, I appreciate the show. He's made it pretty clear. I think his philosophy, and I don't want to speak for him, obviously, but is he wants to give people a real opportunity to have a conversation and, and be able to share more of who they are and what they're about. And so that's why his shows are an hour and a half to three hours usually, which uh, takes some time to listen to, but I always get something out of them. So anyways, thank you, Brendan. <laughs> that was so, a very long one to thank you. So Brendan's question Uh, he said, is there a more efficient way to do this inside of the app? So I think think the best thing that we can do is first off, help people understand that the altitude on your drone is the most inaccurate piece of data on your drone. We talk a lot about this in mapping class because it's not well known that consumer GPS is uh, fundamentally more inaccurate than um, a real-time kinematic GPS, otherwise known as RTK GPS, or military-grade GPS. Uh, It makes sense, right? Because it's cheaper, so, you know, less accurate. But what we're seeing um, is uh, higher-end GPS units coming to the market for much lower price points and barriers to entry. 
uh, to answer his question, is there a more efficient way to do this in the app? Uh, I think the answer is no. And the reason why is because the GPS is so inaccurate. So if you take off in an area with magnetic interference or uh, if you're near steel objects, um, then chances are that you're going to have um, even more inaccurate data. Uh, if you are in a large valley between two uh, cliffs or whatever, then you're going to have you know much more inaccurate information as well. Hmm. So I think the first thing is that your altitude is the most inaccurate data on the drone. The accuracy level can change depending on where you take off. And if you're measuring AGL, above ground level elevation, then know that that parameter will change dependent on where you took off. So you're not really measuring from the ground to the top of the roof. You're measuring from where you took off and that ground elevation to the roof. So it's not really an accurate uh, representation. Now that said, you know, to further the question, he said, is there like, I've, you know, I've learned about PIX4D and photogrammetry. So, you know, what is, what is drone mapping? It's measuring from images. But in order to measure from images, we have to have many images of the same object from different different perspectives in order to truly understand and derive the shape and size of an object. Um, and in order to get accurate z-axis measurements, then you're going to need what we call ground control points, which essentially ties the map into the real area of the world and creates uh, a better scale for your map so you could take those vertical measurements. Um, to answer his question, I don't think that there is a more efficient way to do it inside of the app. Could he measure the height of the building? Yeah, he sure could. Uh, if he drone mapped it, you know, I'm not sure that that's more efficient, though. Now, if he's doing, let's say, you know, inspections, like he said, and he needs to take more than just that one measurement, then uh, it sounds like we might have someone who's uh, getting into uh, drone modeling, Rob. Sounds like it. So one of the things that, that we make sure everybody does when they go out and fly is determine MOCA, right? So in that sense, that's just you're just looking for a general range. You don't need real accurate information. That's why it's not really been an issue with that particular well, procedure. At, at Flight Mastery, we tell everyone to, when you measure MOCA, if you move your takeoff location, MOCA will change. Right. But even still, we're not worried about a real finite measurement. It's just understand this and maybe even give yourself a margin of error mm -hmm. above that. Which is kind of what we teach people. Yeah. Is give them the, the MOE. I think that's kind of a better way to go about it because really hard to, to get an accurate measurement. So, I mean, really, really hard. Honestly... His more accurate means of measurement may just be one of those Leica laser tools because it'll measure uh, the cosine and sine of the angle in which you're taking a measurement and be able to um, correct the measurement on that. So I think it's a great thing. But I really do appreciate that uh, that question, my friend. So if we can further answer your question, let us know. We would love to help. But that's going to do it for us today. We do appreciate those questions that you send in at askdroneu.com. If you are a member, thank you very much. And uh, the rumors are true out there. We are launching something very new, very big, very soon. So uh, keep an eye out. I think you will be impressed and may also... Uh, help understand as to why we've been so tired here at Drone U. So <laughs> anyway, um, but we do appreciate uh, everything that you guys do for us. So thank you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs>